Our top focus in the world DNA. Shocked Russians brought flowers to the Crocus City Concert Hall to pay their respects to the 133 people killed in a gruesome terror attack claimed by the Islamic State group. Candles and flowers were laid in memory of the victims at monuments across Russia and at Russian embassies abroad. Mourners hung flowers on fences and piled them on the ground. And that is at a short distance from the concert hall where gunmen opened fire on a crowd and set off explosives that started a huge fire. Amid the grief, firefighters pulled bodies from the rubble and worked to put out the flames. Their fears that the death toll may rise further. The attack happened just days after Russian President Vladimir Putin cemented his grip on power. In an address on Saturday, Putin said that the authorities detained a total of 11 people in the attack. Russia said all four gunmen suspected of carrying out the shooting had been arrested. Putin said that the killers were trying to escape to Ukraine and vowed strong action even as Kiev denied any involvement in the attack. Putin did not mention the Islamic group in his speech to the nation. I can now say the following. All four of the actual performers of the act of terror, all those who shot and killed people, were found and detained. They tried to hide and were moving in the direction of Ukraine. There, according to the preliminary data, they had a crossing of the border prepared from the Ukrainian side. On the other hand, Kiev accused him and other Russian lawmakers of falsely linking Ukraine to the assault to stoke fervor for Russia's war in Ukraine. One more thing. What happened in Moscow yesterday, it is obvious that Putin is trying to find someone else to blame. Their methods are always the same. We have seen it all before, destroyed buildings and shootings and explosions. And they are always looking for someone to blame. Condemnation and messages of support poured in from world leaders, the latest being that of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un who sent a message of sympathy to Russian President Vladimir Putin over the massacre. The message said, nothing can justify heinous terrorism against human lives. Now, Kim and Putin have shown blossoming personal friendship as the ties between their countries have expanded in recent months. Well, a day after this horror, Russia is observing a day of mourning across the country. And as they do, I will now take you through the deadliest attacks carried out on Russia in its recent past. Seven years ago, on the 3rd of April, a blast in subway tunnel in St. Petersburg killed 14 people, while at least 51 people were injured. Meanwhile, in 2013, on December 29th and 30th of 2013, two suicide bombers killed 34 people in the southern Russian city of Volgograd. The bomb attacks on Volgograd's railway station and a trolley bus just before New Year shook the entire country. Two years before that, on January 24, 2011, and this attack took place at Moscow's Domedovo airport. Well, that suicide bombers killed more than 30 people, while more than 100 people were reportedly injured. Moving on, on March 29, 2010, terror returned to the heart of Russia again in Moscow, where two deadly suicide bombings on Moscow subway stations during rush hour, that attack killed 40 people in the year 2010. Meanwhile, on November 27, 2009, a powerful bomb derailed a speeding express train halfway between Moscow and St. Petersburg, killing at least 26 people and wounding nearly 100. According to reports, the Nevesky Express that was carrying 600 passengers from Moscow to St. Petersburg, they were traveling at 200 kilometers per hour when an explosion hurled three rare cars off the tracks. While on 21st of August 2006, 
that is due during the morning hours a bomb blast tore through a moscow market again according to reports at least 10 people were killed while 31 were said to be injured and in 2004, on the 6th of February, a blast tore apart a train car in the Moscow metro, killing at least 39 and wounding at least 129 others.